Night City, the place everyone wants to be. The Night City of Cyberpunk 2077 is full of danger and opportunity, where corporations control everything from their luxury towers, while the gangs rule the streets. It's a place where you can carve out your legend and stand next to the many greats, or wind up dead in a gutter. But that's not how Night City started out. It began as a simple dream by one man to create the city of the future. A future that he never got to see realized. So let's turn back the clock to the founding of Night City and discover its bloody origins. Much of our information on the creation of Night City is sourced from an article as part of the Night City celebration of its 25th anniversary, written by Dr. Edward Michaels, the Dean of Night City University at the time. Our story begins with one man, Richard Knight. During the 1980s and early 90s, Knight was an ambitious businessman with an eye for architecture and urban planning. He was a partner in the construction firm Halsey, Ferris & Knight, which specialized in the creation of corporate-funded projects. Their reliability and impressive standards of quality made them a go-to for many corporations, and they raked in the profits. However, this status wasn't enough for Knight, who eventually grew bored of designing simple office buildings. He was a visionary, with a dream of something far more ambitious. So, in 1990, Knight left Halsey, Ferris, and Knight to start his own firm, Knight International. There, he would begin drafting up plans for the ideal American city, one that Knight hoped would shape the future and become a template for all cities that followed. It was around this time that the collapse was entering full swing. It was a mass decline of economies and societies, not just in America, but around the world. Things were changing quickly, and in the chaos, the megacorporations swooped in, filling the power vacuum left by the failing American government. Many began taking control of America's once great cities, carving out their own pieces of the United States for themselves. But this was easier said than done, as many of these cities were in ruins, and much work needed to be done to wrestle them under control. It would be a lot easier if a corporation could build a city from scratch, molding it from the ground up to suit the purposes of those that controlled it. And this is where Knight's city of the future came in. He needed the capital to make his dream a reality, and the megacorps wanted a city for themselves. It was a match made in heaven. Investors flocked to Knight, and by 1992, Arasaka, EBM, and Petrochem all backed his project. In particular, the backing of Petrochem ended up being of particular fortune for Knight. Knight was already searching for land to build on the central California coastline. As it turned out, Petrochem owned most of the region of Del Coronado Bay, which sits comfortably in between San Francisco and Santa Barbara, and was the perfect spot for Knight's vision. After acquiring the rest of the surrounding area, construction began in 1993 on what would be called Coronado City. Unfortunately for Richard Knight, he would never see his dream city completed. Knight wanted Coronado City to be unlike any city built before it. He opted to use the most revolutionary building techniques of the day. As a result, this left out a lot of the old school construction companies from the project, many of whom were in dire financial situations thanks to the collapse. This even included Knight's old firm, now known as Halsey, Ferris, and Skiv, who were in so much financial strife that they even made deals with the local mob. The bitterness from his old partners and the many others who were hoping to be contracted for the construction of Coronado City painted a huge target on Knight's back. For much of the city's construction, Knight would receive resistance from those who felt slighted by him, with some going as far as threatening his life. But Knight would not be perturbed, brushing off these threats or relying on his corporate partners to handle them. This lasted for four years, before finally, on September 20th, 1998, Knight's enemies got him. He was shot by an unknown gunman in his penthouse suite, and to this day, no one knows which of Knight's many enemies was responsible for his murder. The nearly completed Coronado City was renamed Knight City, in honor of the visionary founder. Unfortunately, the resulting chaos from Knight's death would cause his dream city to never be fully realized. 
The next seven years would be a tumultuous back and forth between Knight's corporate partners who had invested heavily in the city and the mob who had swooped in to control most of, if not all, of these street level businesses. By 2005, the corporations gave up, deciding it wasn't worth their time and instead remained holed up in the corporate center, the heart of Knight City. This left the mob as the de facto rulers and started what was later known as the Dark Ages. Violence became the norm and murder was at an all-time high, with thousands of unsolved cases. The streets had become a literal war zone. This lasted until 2009 when the corporations eventually chose to step in. Murder on the streets was one thing, but the chaos and mob rule started to affect the one thing that really mattered, business. Megacorp Arasaka led a full-on paramilitary assault, with soldiers in the streets, tanks, and even fly-by bombings. Known as the Mob War, this powerful show of force completely decimated the mob's power and put the corporations back in charge. The next eight years were spent finally trying to bring the city back to a semblance of Knight's original vision. Many parts of the city, especially those with major corporate interest, did become that beautiful vision of the future that Knight wanted. A place of innovation and the merging of many cultures. A city of dreams where anyone can make it big. However, the years of chaos have forever shaped Night City, and it is still a place of dangerous street gangs, mob influence, and needless violence. This would be only the beginning of Night City's long and bloody history, and by no means the worst thing to happen to it. But that's the story for another day. Thank you for watching this brief look at the creation of Night City. This is only a small part of the city's vast history and there are many more stories to tell. If you're interested in learning more yourself, we highly recommend you check out Cyberpunk 2020's Night City Sourcebook. This book breaks down everything about Night City in the year 2020, from its street gangs to its local infrastructure to even its airport. The information you heard today was sourced from this book. If you want to learn about a particular part of the world of cyberpunk, give a suggestion in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time when we dive into the story of one of Night City's most legendary figures.